Buck, are you there? I'm here, guys. What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, I just want to say a big fan. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, we... we 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 were talking in depth, you know. You you were you said on your video blog on your Facebook, you were sitting back on your deck, you're relaxing, and you're gonna just soak it up. You, you said this was one of the the best shows, if not the best shows, you put on in your ten you know ten plus years there. Um, but you're already out doing media. What's going on? You listen, man. My 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 media guy Scott, he works me to the grind, man. But you know what? He knows me. I can take one day off. And then, you know, I have a few drinks on that one day off, and now all of a sudden it's like, okay, let's roll it out again. Let's go with the next show. And that's, uh, I got a disease, man. My, di- my disease is MMA and, and the MFC, and, and I don't want to stop, you know? That's right. Now, uh, we've had some of your boys on, on the show uh, before. Ryan Ford, uh, he made his re debut um, this past weekend. Didn't quite go as as he expected. I'm sure as a lot of you know fighting fans. Which what was your take on on Ryan Ford's performance? My my take is that Ryan Ford's an unbelievable athlete and a great fighter. He just he just met another great fighter that caught him in an armbar. And uh, when you're at this level of MMA, which the maximum fighting championship is, that kind of stuff happens, right? And I told that to Ryan Ford. Same with Douglas Lima, man. The guy's a stud. I I love the guy. He's he's an unbelievable fighter. And uh, he's going to be trouble for anybody. And the, and the great thing is he's in the Maximum Fighting Championship. And, and people shouldn't be surprised because there's so many high-level guys in my organization. It can happen to anybody at any time. So is Ryan right. taking it hard? I hope so. I mean, uh, I hope every fighter in my organization that doesn't win takes it hard. I want him to. You know, if they're, if they're out at the after party wearing a lampshade on their head, they shouldn't be in this organization. They should go somewhere else. And you're referring to? Well, no, I don't mean it that way. I mean, it, if the guy's losing a fight in my organization and he's not taking it hard, he shouldn't be in my organization. I wanted him to take it hard, you know, and then get back and get back on the horse and come back in the MFC and kick someone's ass. I mean, that's that's what this organization is. It's not. It's, listen, look at Solomon Hutchinson, David Heath fight. Did you watch that fight? I mean, these guys, these guys almost killed. They almost killed each other in the in the ring. And, and at the same time, there's people like, oh, "Are you going to cut Solomon Hutchinson?" I go, "You're going to cut Solomon Hutchinson. I'm going to give him a bonus and I'm going to re-sign him, right?" And he lost right. the fight, right? Because that's what I want in my organization. I don't want some guy humping some guy's life for three rounds. I want that. That's what that's what I want, and that's what everybody else wants. Don't be mistaken. You know, when you you see these guys like Fitch and these other guys fight, people don't want that shit no more. They want to see guys like Ryan Ford fight, win or lose. They want to watch him fight. I want to watch him fight. I want to watch Tom Watson fight. I want to watch Dwayne Lewis fight. I want to watch those guys because I know they're going to throw it down. Yeah, and it seems like that's been, I don't know, the trend nowadays, especially the UFC when they announce this match is going to be for the number one contenders match. People play safe, and it's boring. You're right. They shouldn't tell anybody anything. They should say they just fight and then make an assessment after the fight's over. But even it was hilarious, man. When I saw DW do that the other day, he's like he's talking about uh, you know Fitch getting a title shot, and then he watched him fight, and he <laughs> he got amnesia all of a sudden, right? He's like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Yeah, after he already announced that he was going to get a title shot, and it's like no one wants to watch that, man. Hey, don't forget, Fitch is a hardworking guy, and I'm sure he, he trains his nutsack off in the gym every day. But do I want to watch him fight? Absolutely. Absolutely not. Right. You know, do you want to watch Gray Maynard fight against, against uh, you know, uh, you know, I got the best 155 pounder in the, in the, on the planet right now. And it's, it's hilarious because stylistic matchup wise, McKee can beat those guys. He can beat Frankie Edgar. He could beat, you know, Gray Maynard. He can, you know, and that's, that's <laughs> and, the funny part. Well, and that's the thing. Well, we had McKee on. He told us before this fight, he, he told us, Guys, if I go to another decision, I'm going to retire. I've changed my style. I've changed my stance. And what happens, you know, this past weekend, he he gets the first TKO and seems like ages. But why? Why is it, guys? You know why? Because he's such an unbelievable athlete. His wrestling level, he was 164-0 and 0 or whatever in wrestling. 
Um, and then he just decided to get real mean because people started shit talking him and started talking down to him. And you talk to a guy like McKee and you start talking down to him and long enough, he's going to do that. Now, it's not like I put him against some soup can. He fought Acevedo, the only guy to choke out Jose Aldo. Choked out Jose Aldo. Out, out. And McKee beat the crap out of him like Aldo never, you know, like uh, Acevedo never had a fight in his life before. It was unbelievable. He manhandled him. So, so what's next? How do you challenge McKee now? Well, I, listen, I call out anybody, anybody that's listening tonight, right? All, all you 155ers that think you're a bunch of tough guys, oh, I don't care what show you're in, call me. You want to fight Antonio McKee? He's going to make you look stupid. He's going to embarrass you on, on, on HDNet television, and that's what's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, you might get lucky. You could try to get lucky, try to hit him with a shot or try to, you know, that's what you're planning on when you're getting ready in your camp. Listen, Frankie Edgar goes in a ring against Antonio McKee. He will lose 90 out of 100 times. I, I would, I'll bet my Rolex and my Breitling on it. Well, there, right, there, right. actually, that's funny because there actually is one guy who has, in an interview I've seen before, who has, in a sense, called out Antonio, and he fights the king of the cage. Are you familiar with uh, Bobby King Green? I know who the kid is, man. The problem is I don't think he can cross a border. Because if he could, I would sign him too. Because, listen, he fights for a, a, a very low-level MMA organization. At the same time, that doesn't make him a low-level MMA fighter. He's not. He's a very high-level guy, and he's a really good fighter, right? I got a lot of respect for him. The problem is I don't think he can cross a border. And if he could, I would do the fight tomorrow. Well, why couldn't he uh, cross the border? Um, I'm not sure, but you'll probably have to check with his legal counsel. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, no. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't make up the rules, bro. You know, I live in another country, right? So he, you know, he, he, he's got to cross the border and come here. And if he, you know, I don't know, you know, it could be anything. I mean, in this day and age, with the way things are, I mean, he could have a speeding ticket and they won't let him cross the border. That's kind of how it is now. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So ten years in, um, you, you know, you're coming off your best. Fight your best fight card yet to date. What's next for for you, man? I don't know. I'm putting. I'm put, I'm gonna go in my laboratory tomorrow, man. Start mixing up the potion again, and uh, for November 12th, and I'm gonna put something magical together again, man. But I know. I know what to do now. You know, it's like it's great to sign all these guys and do all this stuff, but I, I'm signing fighters, man. So I, I don't. I don't care anymore. I don't. I don't think it's just such a name thing anymore. I think it's a. It's a, it's a fighter thing and. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to start, I did it on this show. I did it on MFC 24 and they were the two best shows I've ever had. And that's what people want to see. That's all people are talking about right now on MFC. You see, people ain't talking about that other show that was on the same weekend as me. I mean, there's some people, right? But no one's talking about like they're talking about the MFC right now. I mean, because people are excited about watching great fights. Now, now I put the pressure on myself to do it all over again, and I know what to do now, though. It took me 10 years. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so it took me 10 years to figure out exactly what people want to see. Now I know what they want to see, and I'm going to do it every time for them, every time. And, and so is that what takes you, you said you're number three or number four, uh, I guess, North America here. Yeah, who's bigger, you know, that, that, who's bigger than, who's bigger, who's bigger than UFC and Strike Force? That's it, man. WEC, okay, because UFC owns them, I'll give up that. Who else? Who? Nobody. You know, this, this tuna fighting championship, this, this shellac fighting champ, championship, these guys, bro, Record me saying this right now. They won't be here next year. They won't be. I will be. I've been here for 10, 11 years. These guys won't be here next year. I said the what same thing about IFL. The of the cage? Uh, well, listen, I know Terry Chubblecott because he's chop shop MMA, man. He's not stupid. He, Terry's a smart guy, man, but he knows what he is. He knows that he's the... The, the, you know, junkyard of MMA, you know, and he, he, he embraces that. But, hey, listen, why do you think HGNet's gonna, not gonna, re, you know, they're not gonna renew their deal probably with them? Why is that? They're not gonna renew it because he doesn't go to that level, man. He won't go to that level, you know? And because I gotta go out and get bigger fighters. I gotta go out and get, you know, my payroll's gotta go up. That's why, that's the difference between me and King of the Cage, right? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Where he spends in a year for where he spends in a year for his payroll, uh, you know, in in a in a, in a sh you know, I spend that in in, in one show where he spends in a whole year on his payroll. Man, so uh, you know, you you're blowing up here. Um, 
do you plan on you know extending your reach um, down to the states or? or, or I do, guys. You, you I do, but the problem is the, eco- the economics in the states right now is not the greatest, right? I mean, mm-hmm. when you charge six hundred dollars to sit in the ringside of you know ringside of MFC 